Gotta ask Herb Greenberg. He is editor with Empire Financial Research and a CNBC contributor. Herb, welcome. It's good to see you again. It's great to see you, Kelly. Is a time like this kind of a, you know, kind of get you all amped up to start tearing through balance sheets and all the rest of it? Or, or do you already feel like you have a pretty good handle on the exposures throughout the corporate world and in the banks? Well, you, you always have to try to figure out what, what where you may get hoodwinked. That's the way I tend to look at it. And I think in this case, um, you know, what I'm always looking for is I start out by looking for stocks to avoid. And I think that's the way you have to start doing this. I did a piece the other day, a thousand stocks to avoid. And the reason I put that out there is there's, you know, there are certain things you could look at that are pretty simple. So there's this chart out there. I don't know if you have the chart up, but it's an interesting chart from Kalish Concepts, which is a quantum mental firm, uh, some folks I know I'm pretty friendly with. And they had something really interesting. And what they talked about was in the Russell 3000, there are 1,000 companies. Now, get this. This is a startling statistic. 1,000 companies that either aren't making money or can't afford to pay their interest on the debt they currently have. Now, if you were to look at those 1,000 companies and if you strip them away, you didn't own them since 1989, the other 2,000 stocks would have well outperformed those stocks. So you're all, you always want to look for the companies that are just generally fundamentally stronger, even though they may not be as sexy, they may not be as uh, exciting to, 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 to follow, to talk about. But sometimes they're the ones that are actually going to do better over the long term. So I think when you're looking at these things right now, I think the thing everybody's looking at is always the maturity of securities and looking at bonds. And what is their bond portfolio? And these companies that basically, you know, are cash strapped and maybe they have to continue to borrow. If they have maturities coming due right now, that's not a good that's something mm -hmm. you have to pay attention to, especially if it's a large chunk. Tyler, if it's a large chunk. Of what they have so if I do. take 3,000 and I subtract 1,000, that still leaves me with 2,000 uh, out there that presumably are investable. But then I'm sure, because of what you do, is that you can eliminate another large swath of them and come down to ones that are truly uh, meritorious. How do you do that, I, and what names bubble up? <laughs> well... <laughs> Excuse me. I do it. I use actually use a system that helps me weed out anything where there looks to be earnings manipulation mm -hmm. or um, I'm looking for the strongest quality of earnings. I'm looking for the strongest uh, balance sheets. I'm looking for anything where I can avoid getting tripped up. So, you know, there are companies out there. Look, they're, they're the, some of them are just so obvious right now. You know, that are good ones, you know, a company like a Costco, right? You look at a company like this in an environment like this, and I know people talk about it all the time. It's one of those companies. But you talk about it, and you say, My gosh, my goodness, these guys are basically telling you, they're telling you, if you listen to their conference calls, that if all else goes wrong, they can pay a special dividend because they generate so much cash. You know, what you're looking for is I always say real companies that make real products or have real services that make that that serve real people and have real profits and real cash flow. So Costco has so much going on, they can afford to pay a special dividend. They tell you they may very well do that. They're saying it. They're saying they could raise their membership fees. They really could. So you're looking for the opportunities in an environment like this, but you're also looking for, for example, there's a bank I like, a community bank. Who wants to talk about community banks right now? Regional bank, nobody. But I like this one company, it's called Triumph Financial. It's based in Texas, small bank. Here's what you need to do with the bank like that. You take a look at the maturities on its securities. They lay it out in their financial filings. They have, a, and you compare it to say Silicon Valley Bank. It's night and day. It's, those maturities are spread out across, you know, zero to five years. And you also have a situation where, um, where the held to maturity securities are just a tiny bit of their entire portfolio. So you can start, you know, if you're looking at banks, you can always use Silicon Valley Bank as right. a benchmark. And this bank, by the way, does something different, you know, has more going on than just being a bank. 